Hello everybody, welcome back to Thegis YouTube. Pretty much what I do here is I review the most interesting notebooks to come to the PC market, and what I have for you today is, once again, not a notebook review. This is indeed another How to Get Out of Bronze tutorial, this time for Zerg. The reason I waited so long to do a Get Out of Bronze League as Zerg video is because I didn't know how for the longest damn time. Zerg is, as it's been described as a very mechanical race. Uh, it's a lot... Uh, that is because there's a lot more button pushes to get what you want. In fact, in order to just to spawn a worker, of course, you have to push two buttons instead of one. You have to push S and then D for drone. But anyway, what we're going to do here is the basic overlay of my build order is I'm not going to do a fast expand. I'm just going to expand at nine minutes because when I'm trying to play in the Silver League at Zerg, I get crushed every time I do a fast expand. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a 14 pool. What I mean by that is I'm going to spawn 14 workers and then I'm going to make my spawning pool and my extractor and then my queen and all that kind of good wonderful stuff. Now then, as Zerg, the first thing you should do is you should maneuver your first overlord down to the natural expansion of your opponent, uh, which you may have noticed that I already did. I just had to talk first. And you guys may notice, but I'm not doing this live <laughs> because I actually tried to do this live a couple of times and well, I lost both times, so I got frustrated and stopped trying. So I'm just sort of kind of talking as I go along to, well, I did this, you know, obviously, but I, I pre-recorded it and now I'm talking along to it. Anyway, as you can see, my spawning pool's halfway done, and as soon as I did my spawning pool, I started my extractor, and as soon as my extractor was done, I just moved three drones over to there. Now what I'm going to do is, as soon as I get 100 gas, I'm going to get my zerg speed, and you will see that as soon as I do my spawning pool, as soon as my spawning pool pops, in other words, I'm going to get my queen. Now. Another thing that I did is, at about this, uh, there, see, there's my first overlord popping. I started that overlord at about 15 supply. Now, what you want to do with this overlord is, um, well, if you haven't already seen some kind of bunker rush play, it's, it's a good idea to position an overlord uh, over your natural expansion. Uh, you can, I would strongly recommend you do that in any case. Uh, instead of maneuvering your first overlord over to your opponent's natural expansion, you can maneuver your own overlord to your own natural expansion. The first, uh, the first thing, because bunker rushes can start very, very early, or even cannon rushes, and so you just—it's nice to have that nice little uh, extra vision over your natural expansion. And as soon as my first queen popped, I went ahead and started another queen. Uh, that second queen is going to be my creep spreading queen and of course as, for, as uh, soon as that first queen spawned it inject larva into my natural in my natural in my main and so let's see here oh another thing I should cover is right as soon as I got my right as soon as you get your zerg speed with your next 50 minerals it's nice to get a baneling nest because our strategy here against this Terran opponent is going to be zerg baneling and mutalisk that is going to be the, the pretty much the only three army units that we're going to produce. We're not going to do spine crawlers. We're not going to do spore crawlers or anything fancy like that because you don't need that to get out of silver. Pretty much all, you, or I mean, out of bronze. All you need to do out of, get, to get out of bronze is to get some good macro going. And this is how this is uh, me showing you how to do good macro zerg. Now, uh, a good way to get out of bronze league is first of all hotkeys. Second of all, never miss your injects with your queens. As you can see, my queen is very low energy right now. At least the one right next to my main. And as soon as you can inject with your one queen, you can always plant a uh, creep tumor with your other queen. And basically, as soon as you get uh, a good amount of workers, uh, just keep on spawning army units until your, your opponent attacks you first, especially if it's uh, the AI, the very hard AI because you want as much army as you can possibly muster. Don't go so heavy on the drones at first, in this first part of the game. And basically what you're saving up for now is to get a layer. You want to get layer as soon as possible. See, as soon as I had enough uh, Vespian gas and minerals for my layer, it popped up there. Yep, 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 yep. And you want to get a lot of banlings and a lot of zerglings. You don't care about drones right now. You don't need drones. You need zerglings, banelings, and creep spread. Now, why am I putting my units back there? 
behind my ramp because I want to get a good surround on the Terran army when it comes in and I'm waiting to spread my creep past that point because if I spread my creep now the uh, opposing army may sneak up on it and kill a creep tumor and you don't want that to happen at all and also I've never missed my injects yet 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 you should have seen it when I was trying to record this live oh I miss injects like crazy I have extra minerals right now I want to spend them so I want to get a couple of evo chambers and I don't believe that my second tier layer has uh, popped yet Anyway, I'm getting bored, waiting for the opponent, so I'm going to go ahead and spread my creep a little bit. I'm not going to worry about expanding it until I fend off that first attack. Because my creep is into that point where I can, uh, there it is, there's the first attack. See, now this is a good angle right here. I can get a nice surround, and then my balance can just go right in there and kill them all. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to concentrate on expanding. Hopefully. I think. Yes. Yes, indeed. So I'm going to move my drone there before I reach 300 minerals so that uh, it's as efficient as possible. And I'm going to get a couple extractors there soon, too. I think. I should. What's my main queen doing? I guess I had a little bit of extra minerals on my... Or a little bit of extra energy on my main queen, so I uh, planted an, uh, an extra creep tumor. You know, why not? Put that energy to good use. Now you want to get your spire right about now because you want to be able to put out those mutilisks as quickly as possible if you guys have any suggestions or recommendations for me keep them to yourself I don't want to hear them <laughs> because this is a good way to get out of bronze now another thing you could do extra against a computer opponent is if you're going against a protoss get some spore crawlers if uh, spine crawlers eh, maybe you don't really need them if you're going up against a bronze or a silver level opponent you just need to mostly spawn Zerglings and Banelings. Roaches against Terran aren't that great. Um, if you're going for Roaches, you're probably up against a Zerg opponent because that's the anti-Baneling. Uh, and if you're up against Protoss too, uh, you can go either or Baneling or or Roach. Uh, I mean, it, Baneling may not seem like the obvious choice because Protosses have their shields and their units sustain quite a bit of damage, but that just means you just need to get a little bit more Banelings and they fall pretty easily. Especially Stalkers. Um, but yeah, Protoss, it's, uh, Roaches are just as effective, too. Except that they're slow, so you have to micro them. Oh, here comes another attack. See? There. Another good angle of attack. Nice surround. Get, get in there with your Zerglings first, and then your Banelings will follow and do the damage they need to do. There's a couple more units streaming in. I don't like that angle right there, so I backed up a little bit so I could get a really good surround on everybody. Yeah, that's why I backed up. You'll see me do that quite a bit more, I think, as this goes on. Because if, I can't, if you can't get a good surround, back up and let their units come forward. Uh, if they're smart, they won't, and they'll retreat. In which case, you can probably just run after him and surround him anyway. Because Zerglings with speed on him are very, very fast. So what I want to do now is I want to just build drones, drones, drones. I should be building drones, drones, drones. I could probably transfer some drones, but I never do. Because, I don't know, I just really want to win right now. Never miss your injects. If your queens have extra energy like mine do right now, which is bad, uh, your queens should never have extra energy. But if they do, plant some creep tumors. It never hurts to have more creep tremors. Banelings are good too. I have a lot of extras, a lot of excess gas. What you could probably do with that is get some infestors out. Infestors are good too versus Terran, but they're a very micro-intensive unit because they don't attack by themselves. You actually have to tell them to attack. So that's probably why uh, Banelings are just an easier choice for the lower level ladder play. And get overlord speed too. <laughs> See, as soon as I saw that uh, that overlord was being attacked, I got overlord speed. Overlord speed is very nice. Uh, you could get ventral sacks too if you want to do some fancy drop play. Fancy drop play is pretty cool. And then of course there's the bane rain, which is effective mostly against just Protoss. Get some extractors there. Never miss your injects. Inject, inject, inject. Oh, and get upgrades too. I do have some extra minerals, but right now at this point, I think I'd like to get a few more mutilisks out before uh, I get upgrades. Of course. Okay, so maybe I'm getting banelings. Creep spread. Never forget your creep spread. 
Uh, my injects are almost done. Always, always, always look for the opportunity to inject your larva. Right there. See, I'm going to do it right away, right away, right away. There we go. Yeah, buddy. Just getting those injects in. Uh, did I also mention that um, injects are good? Because they really are. Anyway, also, never get supply blocked. It's it's a lot easier as Zerg to get supply blocked than it is with Terran. I mean, as you can see in the last video that I made with the Terran, I had my supply building, my supply depot building SCV. And so whenever that SCV was idle, I knew that I could build another supply depot. That you don't have here with Zerg. You, ha you have to definitely pay attention to what you're doing because being supply blocked is very easy. Also, mini-map attention is very, very crucial. As you can see, I spotted those Hellions by the uh, gold expansion. This is not a good angle of attack. It's kind of a nice little funnel, but luckily those Hellions, uh, they did an okay job of getting my Zerglings out of the way so that my Banelings could go in there and kill those other units. Not that great, though. Uh, a better way to handle that would have been to back up and then have just Zerglings attack the Hellions. Even though the Hellions are, are very good against Zerglings, you don't want to waste your Banelings on the Hellions. You want to use your Banelings on the... on the bio. Not so much the, uh, pseudo-mech that the Hellions are. Inject, inject, inject. That's about now that uh, after that, ex that after that last attack, it's a good time to expand, so I'm busting down those rocks with the mutalisks. I should probably send some zerglings over there too if I haven't already. Usually you want to expand a lot sooner than this, but I'm being super cautious. Usually against the computer uh, very hard AI, you don't have to expand. But it's a good idea to do that anyway. Let's see, now I'm planting down my hatchery and spread my creep. Uh, what I'm going to do eventually is I'm going to move all of my uh, rally points from all of my hatcheries to that lower expansion there because uh, pretty much after the uh, computer uh, scouts that third base of mine it always always attacks it it's so predictable and I don't know uh, how predictable your uh, person your uh, human opponent is going to be but it's probably, uh, it's just a good idea anyway to move your units to the lower ground because you, if you see my creep, it's extending way down the map there. And if I have my units down here at this third base, I can see the, uh, the opponent attacking from halfway across the map there. But I can't see them right away if they're, if they're attacking my third. So it's just a nice place to have my units there. And also, uh, you will see the way that I attack my opponent when they're uh, confronting me is I always attack move behind the opposing army. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't attack any army units. I don't, uh, I always attack behind their opponent because that's how you get the best surround and your units will not stop attacking and all of them will move to the front. It's just a good idea. And then when you're, uh, let's see, see, I move my cursor down below his army, and I attack the man behind. Oh, it's like, well, I attack command to the left of it, which is kind of like behind it. And I always take out medivacs. That's nice to take out medivacs. Don't let them, don't let them retreat. And look at that big old mutilus cloud I have. Now, I could probably move in and, and uh, win right now, but it, I think it, it'll be nice to get in. Get my macro well situated. I'm still kind of establishing that third base. I'm getting a queen there, and all my queens are on separate hotkeys. Now, you can do the cool little trick where you use the hotkey to change your base and have all your queens in the same hotkey, but I don't know how to do that yet. I haven't practiced it, and it's a good idea to not do that. <laughs> uh, just... Uh, you don't have to worry about it if all you're aiming for is to get into the silver or gold league. This kind of a strategy will uh, it'll probably get you into the gold. It'll at least get you into silver. That's for that's for darn sure. Now I wonder if I can transfer any workers from my main, or if I already did that. I wasn't paying attention. That was a good place to uh, of the game to bust down those rocks at the at the silver or the gold expansion. Silver. I have silver league in the brain. And I think I have a queen wandering around doing up to no good. Yeah, what? 
Oh yeah, it's planting a creep tumor. I had a little bit of extra energy, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I didn't have to inject. And I'm supply blocked, which is very, very easy as Zerg, as I said before. With these extra minerals, what you want to do is you want to get some upgrades. Um, you could plant an infestation pit so that you can get your tier 3 going. Uh, I'm not very well practiced in getting my tier 3 against a very hard AI, so... See, there I go with my infestation pit. It's, but it's always nice to have that option. Uh, for Hydralisks... Hmm... You don't need Hydralisks versus Terran. And... Is it because, uh, the thing about a versus Protoss is Protoss have less units to attack. So if you're getting Hydralisk versus, uh, Protoss, you know... It's, yeah. The reason why you don't get Hydralisk versus Terran is because there's more units to attack. Because they only attack one unit at once, and they're pretty expensive. But if you get Mutalisks, they have the little attack that bounces off, and they do splash damage, so... That's cool. And, yeah, still getting lots and lots of Banelings. And this is... this game is going on way longer <laughs> than... than I originally planned. But, hey, if you're out macroing your very hard AI computer opponent at this point of the game, you're most likely going to be able to get out of Bronze League. I can guarantee it. There's another scouting medevac. I do know that your human com your human opponent in the lower leagues most likely isn't going to scout much at all. So I wouldn't uh, wouldn't count on being able to take out those extra scouting medevacs or SCVs. Now is a good idea right now to uh, yeah. Finally, I'm busting down those rocks. Don't tell your banelings to attack to bust down the rocks, because what they do then is they explode themselves on the rocks, and it's a waste of banelings. I've done that way too many times. Fortunately, I was uh, able to learn to not do that. Also, spread your creep. Should have done that a long time ago. My creep spread has been, actually, for this point of the game, it's kind of pathetic, especially considering that the uh, computer opponent isn't taking that much of an effort to push back my creep. Always make sure your idle workers are doing something. But I'm telling my queen to... What? Anyway, now's a good time to inject. Oh, that's what that was. I was looking for a nuke. Oh yeah, nukes. Uh, you're going to encounter a lot of nukes in the uh, in the lower leagues. I can, I can, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure I can guarantee you that. And here I go attacking. I'm just gonna win now. So, um, pretty much, uh, about nukes. Don't worry about nukes. Nukes are just an annoyance. Uh, if you can find the nuke, great. Uh, but most likely what they're going to try and nuke you is your workers. So just move your workers of all your bases around. Don't worry about it so much. Don't think you... I mean, if you get nuked, it's not that big of a deal. You can remake your workers. If they nuke you a lot, then just attack them. Like, whatever. They're very rarely going to actually nuke your army. If they do, just... If you think they're they're nuking your army, just move your army forward. Whatevs. And so, yeah, as you can see, uh, I got a big old muta ball, and I can pretty much attack. Attack, 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 until I win. Um, I'm gonna do this again for Protoss. Maybe that one I'll be able to do live. Uh, this video was recorded with my desktop. I'm using a uh, Core i5 2500K processor clocked at the base clock rate, 3.7 gigahertz, which means a turbo boost to like 4.1 or 4.2 or something like that. Uh, the graphics card is a GeForce GTX 560 Ti. I have a few other videos showcasing uh, this video card as well, including my overclocking video. Um, let's see. Um, uh, for if you guys are still paying attention, my next video review target is the Alienware X51 gaming desktop. Uh, I'm going to try and review that one. It's quick and simple. How much time do I have left on this video? Uh, about a minute. Um, I'm just waiting for the opponent to GG out here. And let's see. Uh, I have two singles on iTunes, Thiege, do you know, Thiege, uh, watching her dance, and let's see, uh, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel, post a link to this video on your Facebook if you have a few other friends who play StarCraft and are struggling.
to get out of Bronze League with, uh, but they so desperately want to play Zerg because it's something different and it's not Terran because Terran is OP! So yeah, this is a good video for them to watch. And don't worry about missile turrets when you have this many mutas, just go in there and kill things. Planetary fortresses, though, are kind of a pain. And remember when you're at when you're attacking behind a planetary fortress and you have banelings in your army, your banelings aren't going to attack the planetary fortress, which is good. You don't want to waste your banelings on buildings unless you're doing a banling bust. But for the most part, you just want your banelings to attack units. Okay, well I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, and you guys have a good night.